Welcome to My Prince Story, a podcast about your favorite personal Prince moments. I'm your host, Dana Marshall. Today, we're talking to Dwayne Tudal, who wrote Prince in the Purple Rain Era studio sessions 1983 and 1984. Outside of this amazing Prince book, Dwayne has also produced and directed documentaries for the History Channel, CBS, Fox, and many other networks. Lucky for us, he's a huge Prince fan and spent 20 years interviewing many people close to Prince that we would die to hang out with. I had a chance to interview Dwayne Tudal a couple months ago on my radio show, and I wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, Dana. How are you doing? Man, I'm so excited to talk to you. That's great. I'm excited to be here. I am a huge Prince fan, so... Good for you. Good for you. That means I am so massively jealous of all the people you interviewed in this book, I can't stand myself. <laughs> I get that. Trust me, I, I geek out on it myself. We're talking right now with Dwayne Tudal. This book, which, by the way, I both own the hard copy and I have the audio book, it's basically... Uh, a deep dive into the 1983 and 1984 studio recordings, but it goes way, way bigger than the recordings, though. Well, the, yeah, the book is, so, so people understand, what I did was, the book is about what he did in the studio, but, like you were saying, it is a story about him and his rise from being a cult artist to the biggest success on the planet, biggest musician on the planet. And I was able to go back and interview, you know, talk about the people around him. I interviewed the entire revolution. I interviewed members of the time and, and, and uh, other bands that were around him. This is a guy that recorded nonstop in 1983 and 84 is when he did Purple Rain. And that's, you know, that's such a huge cultural you know, milestone to have that happen. And you were able so to, I, like, put these, these stories that we've all heard rumors of and actually prove that they were true, like like the rumors that we've all heard for years about the whole Stevie Nicks Stand Back thing. He actually recorded part of Stand Back. Uh, he was asked if he could, you know, she wrote a song, uh, and she was inspired by uh, Little Red Corvette, and he said, okay, and he came by the studio, laid down some keyboards, that's his keyboards on that song, uh, and then he left, and so she gave him half the publishing on that, because he inspired her and he recorded. I thought, that's, that's a story you don't hear very often. And, yeah. and uh, one of the things I love about Prince, and one of the reasons why I wanted to write a book like this, is I'm a music fan. I'm a, I'm a music nut. I love books about the Beatles or books about the Stones or things like that. But there's few people in music that are respected by both the, um, by, by the critics, by uh, other musicians, and loved by the fans. You don't get that where you get Led Zeppelin, who was loved by fans but hated by critics, or sure. you know they, that kind of stuff. It doesn't work. Prince is one of those anomalies that that got all three, and that to me is is, is phenomenal. And the guy was better on any instrument than anybody in his band. You know he could he could go and say, "Let me see that guitar," and he played the guitar thing the way he wanted to hear it. You know, most people can't do that. And that, that to me is, you know, how could you not write a book about that when, when you love that kind of stuff so much? So that's, that's the way. I, and I wrote, it took 20 years working on this book. So Wow, 20 years? Seriously? Well, you got to love a subject if you're going to write 20 years on it. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. And now I know. And, and I'm glad you like the book. That, that you know, it's, it's, um, it's fun to find people that... that like I said, nerd out uh, like I am when it comes to this stuff. And then getting somebody like Questlove, uh, if you don't know who Questlove is, Questlove is the drummer for The Roots, who's also on The Tonight Show, who's a huge music fan, to write the foreword for something like this. That, that to me, makes me feel like, okay, somebody, somebody else gets it. Because you write a book in a vacuum, you hope people like it. But, uh, and I'm a documentary filmmaker, so to me, as I was writing this, I was thinking, how would this be as a documentary? How would, you know, and so I wrote it as if it was a documentary. This is, you know, um, a good documentary takes you someplace you don't get to go. And during this time, Prince was recording, and he wouldn't let anybody in the studio. And you kind of, as an exclusive club of very few people, and I interviewed 40 people, that like I said, that, that were there in the room with him, engineers and band members and singers and and the like, and and you start to hear not only what he did and when he did it, but why he did it, why he wrote this song. He was sad, he was in love, he was angry, you know, and, and he would do a song or two or even three in a day. And so you realize, holy cow, this guy just really is a, he lived music, he was music. And so finding out what was involved to be like that is almost inspiring not only as a musician, which I'm not, but as a writer or as a, as, a, as a parent or something, when you realize somebody's so dedicated to this that they achieved this, 
because they did it themselves. I think that, to me, is, is a, an amazing story. Here's the one thing that I find very unique about this book, as not just compared to any other book about Prince, but any other book. I was able to consume this book in a way I've never consumed media before. Earbuds in, I have my hard drive full of Prince music. So mm -hmm. as I read through the book and you told a story about when Prince recorded Wonderful Ass and who that song is about, boom, I am playing that song in my earbuds and I'm listening to it in a totally different way while I'm reading about the making of the song. And I went through Isn't song after song and it was amazing. I, I had friends that would say that and a lot of people got in touch with me and said, can you give me a list of what songs are where? so that when I do this, I can have a, a playlist and I can I know what to listen to. And I thought that's the coolest thing ever is, is that people found an interactive way to listen to the book and to enjoy the book. And I think once he passed, we all kind of looked through his music through the prism of his passing. Right. And you, when you're reading about why he did something, it takes you back to when he was alive and when he was vital and when he was at his peak. And you realize, oh, my gosh, there's reasons behind this. And you start to hear the music fresh again. And, yeah, you said, when you listen to that and going, wonderful ass, oh, that's how he did that. Or Purple Rain or uh, that he was angry with Morris Day and that's why he wrote this song. Or Morris wasn't writing lyrics or, or Morris brought this to the table or this is, those two just goofing off. You really kind of get a feeling for this is the guy. The coolest review I got from, uh, from this was by Prince's former manager, and he read the book and he said, this is the first book I've read uh, that was the real, the Prince I knew. And I thought that is, when you hear the people that were there say that this book uh, kind of captures his spirit. And you're never going to capture him truly because there's always going to be, you know, it's like Citizen Kane. There's always going to be a different version of the story from somebody else because he would be this person and this person and that person to another person. But when you hear all the stories and even some of the contradict, it does give you an insight into what was a creative genius. And, and that to me is part of the fun of, of, of learning about somebody like that. Who was your favorite interview? You interviewed some people that I absolutely adore. There's, well, there's several people, and, and mostly it's the engineers, because what the, the engineers bring to the table is, and the band members are there for a good chunk of things, but not always. An engineer is there a half an hour before friends get there and leaves a half an hour after him. Um, so they're there for 18, 19 hours in the room with him. Uh, for a guy that's recording that much, they were there for weeks on end in a room alone with him oftentimes. And so they're telling stories about, well, Prince did this for When Doves Cry and this. He recorded all kinds of extra instruments. And you're going, holy cow, I didn't realize that he, it wasn't always a sparse song. He had all kinds of things. So when you talk to somebody like Peggy Mack, who as a kid, I would see her name on, on albums. And Susan Rogers, yes. again, I'd see their name on albums and I'd go, and they're good people on top of it. They're the best people ever. And I love being around them. And that to me is, is part of the fun is, is getting a chance to just kind of hear what they were doing. And, and, uh, and again, Prince was in a good mood this day, or he came in and he was in a rare mood and he was angry and he had, you know, his shirt was open and he had a bandana tied around his leg and that's why he recorded the song and that's why it sounds so angry. And you're going, oh my gosh, that to me is, is uh, it, it just, it makes me want to hear the music and like you said I go back and listen to the song and I'm listening for those little details then um, when I wrote the book it came out last year uh, the book came out I'm coming out with an expanded version this week actually uh, that has an extra 30 pages in it and it has new interviews with more revolution. So I've got all the members of the revolution in this right now. So it's got songs that I'd never heard of before a song called Blue Love and um, a song called The Dawn and a song called I Am Five that I'd never heard of before that are now in the expanded uh, version. Uh, so it's like a 500 and some odd page book. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a big book, but it's, but like you said, it's a book that you kind of go through and you don't realize you're reading like 500 pages. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't quite, you know, it kind of, you whiz by it. I've had friends that say they've read it in two or three days, just kind of. Uh, you know, they couldn't put it down. And that, that to me, again, is, is a real nice compliment when you get uh, Rolling Stone magazine saying it's a four and a half star record, uh, record collector magazine giving it five stars. That's, you know, I'm a, I'm a nerd who wrote a book in a, in a room by himself for, you know, 20 years. And to have people really enjoy that, that's, that's pretty fun. Well, man, I am super happy that you wrote this book. And, Thank you. And I'm hoping you put another 20 years into, like, I don't know, maybe the Graffiti Bridge era or, or something. Well, I'm, I'm working on a second book right now about 1985, 1986. Hopefully that will be out sometime soon. But if people are looking for the book, they can uh, find it in the 
your favorite bookstores and probably in bookstores they don't like as well. Um, and it's also on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And you can find uh, me on Amazon. You can find me on, on Facebook. Uh, there's a, a, a group on Facebook about the book. Uh, I have a website, DwayneTudal.com. It's D-U-A-N-E. T U D A H L. Um, look me up, say hi, and and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I I I, I love talking with stuff. So this is well, I Dwayne. Like kick um, thank you so much. As long as you keep making these books, I'm going to keep throwing my money at you. I promise. <laughs> thank you very much. Have a fantastic day, man. Thanks. Thank you for taking time. I appreciate it, Dwayne. You have a great day. You too. You heard Dwayne mention the expanded version of his book, Prince and the Purple Rain Era Studio Sessions. That's available now for a little over 20 bucks in paperback online. Uh, now, I'm not what people call a reader. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of reading. Uh, maybe too ADD. I usually do the audiobook. This book, however, doesn't work for me as an audiobook. Uh, I have the hardcover of the first edition of the book, and let me tell you how I love this book. I love to put earbuds in, as you heard me mention in the interview, I put earbuds in, and what I'll do is, as Dwayne tells the story of another Prince song or another song by another artist that Prince has contributed to, I will pull that track up and listen to the song while I read about the song's backstory. And this is a whole new way to consume the music I already love and have listened to a million times. Uh, it's it's like a brand new, fresh way to hear a song you already know. Uh, give it a shot. I, I think you'll dig it. I love it. I've already listened to every Prince song a million times. You know what I mean? So, of course, it's not like I get sick of them. I mean, I don't want to listen to all of the big hits over and over as Big Prince fam, I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me that, you know, we're not clamoring to go listen to When Doves Cry over and over, but to hear some of these other tracks, even things like Stand Back by Stevie Nicks, to listen to that song as we hear the story behind Prince walking in and uh, killing it on keyboard on that song. Uh, all of a sudden, you just, it, you feel different while you're listening to it. And I really appreciate that about this book. So I'm really looking forward to to Dwayne Tudal doing his next book, which he claims will be uh, Studio Sessions 1985 and 1986. Uh, that is going to be incredible because we had no idea Prince was recording so much in 83, 84, but we do know that he was a recording maniac in 85, 86, 87. I cannot imagine the stuff we're going to learn about in that next book. Cannot wait. I think we can all agree as Prince fam that choosing a favorite Prince song is a joke, right? How many people have asked us what our favorite Prince song is? That's not a thing. We can't do that. But what's your favorite Prince jam today? Like, what's that song today? Let me know on Twitter at My Prince Podcast or on the My Prince Story Podcast Facebook page. Uh, right now, for me, it would have to be from the 2009 album Lotus Flower. The song is Colonized Mind. Now, listen, I'm never going to get political on this podcast. This is one of these songs where Prince gets very political, but he does it in a way where he basically predicts the very unpredictable place our country has found itself in today. I, uh, I mean, to a T, it's, it's shocking in a way. And he does it with genius songwriting, very funky effects to his voice, just soul-shaking guitar riffs. This song has not gotten the attention it deserves. And uh, even as, as Prince fam, it's worth all of us going back to the Lotus Flower album and listening to Colonize Mind again if you haven't listened to it in a while. That's the thing about being a big lover of Prince music. There is just so much. It's easy for a lot of it to kind of be forgotten or not get attention. And then you go back to it and you're like, man, I didn't give this the love it deserved when it came out. And now I love this track. That happens with me with a lot of Prince stuff where when it first comes out, maybe that wasn't my jam at the time. Now it is. Uh, that could be said for the entire Lotus Flower album. What an interesting album it is. You listen to it now, uh, and Prince does that rare thing. He doesn't do very often. He, he's got the cover of Crimson and Clover on it. Didn't see that coming. Make sure you check out the Lotus Flower album, listen to Colonize Mind, and don't forget to hit me up on Twitter, at My Prince Podcast, 
or on the My Prince Story podcast Facebook page and let me know what your Prince Jam is today. Can't wait to see those. We'll talk about them on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to My Prince Story, the podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to be a guest or you think you know someone that would be a great guest on the podcast, you can let me know on Twitter at My Prince Podcast. And don't forget, we have liner notes for each episode at MyPrincePodcast.com. Podcast.com.